their iconography of uh, Krishna and Balram, it was well established. So uh, it was in the society, everyone knew uh, about this. And these coins were in circulation in northwest uh, part, in Gandhar region and beyond uh, in the Indo-Greek area. So it was, it also shows the spread of uh, the Bhagavad cult. Sabko Mira Abhivadan Om Ganapte Nama Ajke is Shubhav Sarpar Technology Foundation or Uske members Dora Ajit is webinar Me Me Apne Apko Pakar, both of Hagi Sali Samastang. Dr. Dilip Mahapatra, Mr. Gautam Bhattacharya, Professor Deen Bandhu Pandey, Sri Lalit Mishra, and Anne Savi ke prati mein apna abhar vyakt karta hu, jinke karan aaj mujhe is vishay par bolne ka avsar mila. Mera topic hai Hindu culture beyond Kashmir in Gandhar and Bactria. आप सब जानते हैं कि बुद्धिज्म, how Buddhism flourished in India and then in the time of uh, Mauryan Emperor and then later on in the time of the Kushan King uh, Kanishk and other others, it spread beyond the boundaries of India. The present, I am taking the present day boundary, and that is why uh, I am not mentioning about Kashmir because Kashmir is a part and parcel of uh, uh, India. But in ancient India, many parts of uh, Gandhar were very much there with within, and what is going uh, on at present. We are not very sure in the area of Gandhar and Bactria because we don't get the detailed information from uh, these sites, or from many sites, uh, historical sites which uh, uh, are located in this area. So, as I was telling, Buddhism had spread like anything, uh, but very few people know that uh, be, besides Buddhism, Vaishnavism, Shaivism, Shat, and other uh, Hindu uh, culture also spread in, uh, in the area of Gandhar and Bactria. And that is why I have selected this topic for today's uh, presentation. Uh, this is a map of uh, uh, India, present day India, and its uh, uh, ancient boundaries and beyond uh, Indus in the region of Gandhar and further beyond towards River Oxus. It was all uh, unified in the time of uh, Kushans the entire North India as well as present day Pakistan and uh, partly Afghanistan and parts of uh, area around uh, towards south of Oxus. However, the boundaries, I, I, I'll be telling about the um, Gandhar and Bactria now. The Pali literature often mentions Gandhar with Kashmir or Kashmir. And among 16 great states, Shodash Mahajanpad, Gandhar is mentioned 
विथ कम्बोज एंड मद्र मद्र और मद्रक सिंधु सौवीर माहिशक सीम्स टू हैव कवर्ड द ग्रेटर गंधार रीजन इट्स कोर एरिया एंड दे आर मैं इन महाभारत ऑल्सो गंधारन आर्ट ट्रेडिशन इन्फ्लुएंस बाय द हेलेनिस्टिक स्टाइल रिमेन कन्फाइंड टू द कोर एरिया ऑफ द रीजन विथ मोर क्लोजनेस विथ उद्यान और स्वाद इम्पैक्ट ऑफ गंधार आर्ट ऑन मद्र एंड कश्मीर रीजन हैज बीन ट्रेस्ड इन रिसेंट एक्सकवेशन विच आई कैरिड आउट इन एट द साइट कॉल्ड अंबारा इन नियर अखनूर इन जम्मू एंड ऑल्सो एट कानिशपुर और कनिष्कपुर which uh, which is located near baramula in kashmir ancient gandhar is mentioned in the rigved in the context of producing quality wool it is further mentioned in the atharva ved sutra literature and many of the sanskrit and pali texts of later times it was one of the 16 great states as i mentioned uh, it is also mentioned in the anguttar nikay uh, which is a pali buddhist work tradition records that the name of gandhar was derived from the name of druhyu king gandhar the son of angar the core area of gandhar seems to be the region with lamgan and jalalabad to the west the hills of swat and buner to the north and indus to the east and the hills of kalabag to the south pushkalavati or uh, present day charsadda near peshawar and takshila uh, which is taxila where the capitals of gandhar in its western and eastern parts respectively there are a couple of uh, figures uh, uh, photographs uh, of uh, the bheer mound in pakistan at taxila and as i was uh, mentioning taxila taxila was probably the largest city in the gandhar region and it had been built at three different uh, sites in taxila in three different times the earliest site in taxila is the bheer mound so uh, on the left side you can see the picture before the uh, uh, just after excavations by sir john marshall and the present day picture you can see everything is covered whatever the uh, uh, structural remains were found they are covered with thick vegetation the second city at taxila was sirkap which was founded during the time of the indo greek and scythian rulers so uh, these are couple of pictures of uh, sirkap you can see the extensive uh, ruined structures which were excavated uh, at the time uh, of uh, regular excavations at taxila at sirkap and the present day uh, sirkap which is also a world heritage site so in pakistan at certain places uh, some of the sites have been well kept like sirkap is well kept jonian is well kept but some of the sites as i show you, showed you the birkap bheer mound that is in ruins and uh, totally uh, covered under thick vegetation similar is the case sirsuk which is the third site now the, uh, you can see how uh, in north south orientation and in east west orientation in at 90 degree angle the the, the uh, lanes and, and by lanes and main street they the existed slides are not 
हेलो यस सो दिस इज स्लाइड ऑफ सिर कप मैं क्लियर नहीं देख रही है सर थोड़ी वेल आई कैन सी इन माय कैमरा इट इज क्लियर बट आई डोंट नो सो यू हैव टू बी हियर विद अस and then in uh, taxila we have sirsuk about which i just mentioned it was the third city which was founded by kanishk himself the other important site is uh, jolian in taxila where uh, a monastery was constructed during uh, the time of kanishk himself as believed by sir john marshall and the terracotta panel which has now been shifted from uh, the site to the present day archaeological museum in taxila i have tried to identify this uh, uh, panel where lord buddha is depicted uh, on the right side of him is the figure of a uh, worshipper who is typical typically wearing the northern dress and i have tried to identify him with uh, uh, kushan king kanish who was the founder of this monastery at jolian then uh, i would also like to mention that uh, uh, about 4000 coins mostly issued by the kushan rulers have surfaced recently at pipal mandi in peshawar which have been published by osman boprachi in the journal uh, uh, the seventh uh, from paris uh, in its january to june 2008 issue and a new uh, type of gold coin of uh, uh, vima cadfisis with king in rath has been found there it is uh, coin number 9 and 11 she is depicted on reverse of uh, coins have a clear clearly new type of shiva with three heads with legend basileus oemo takto and oemo takto uh, seems to be uh, the vima not vima catfishes but vim takto who was uh, uh, one of the uh, ancestors of kanishk so basilius oemo takto kushano shao so once again coming to the uh, kushan coins let me show you some of the coins where the uh, obverse always has the figure of uh, um uh, king either his bust or in full or riding on elephant or uh, in some other way but on the reverse side of the coins are depicted various deities and here uh, on the uh, left side uh, here you can see uh, there uh, there are depictions of uh, uh on the reverse of the first coin there are two um, figures and it is written skando uh, kumaro that is uh, skando kumaro is one and vasudev that is vasudev and in the second uh, there are depiction of three deities skando kumaro vasudev and sometimes uh, maaseno so all these names are of kartike who was son of uh, lord shiva and on the uh, other coins you have coins in gold as well as in the central coin is in copper so almost every kushan ruler had shiva depicted on his coins shiva is depicted along with his nandi which you can see on these coins and on the right 
top two coins uh, or top one coin you can see shiva or oisho is depicted standing alone in other uh, coins he is depicted in front of uh, standing in front of uh, the nandi in recent years due attention seems to have been given by field archaeologists in gandhar region in pakistan in revealing more information from archaeological sites such as charsada taxila shekhandheri hund andandheri kashmir smas gor gor katri manik rai dheri etc and many archaeological sites have been destroyed by anti hunters through illegal diggings as reflected in articles and research papers many of the sites require still better maintenance as i was mentioning in the case of uh, bheer mound and other uh, mounds at taxila and recent excavations at saraikola in taxila by abdul halim and uh, at charsada that is pushkala and in pushkalavati which was one of the capitals of uh, um, gandhar the western capital of gandhar by excavation by robin cunningham take back the anti this robin cunningham is uh, the present day uh, uh, professor in durham university take back the antiquity of uh, these traditionally known sites to neolithic um phase that is third millennium bc and gandhar grave culture around circa 1300 bc periods respectively which is significant in understanding the relation between tradition and archaeology and also establishing how uh, taxila or takshashila developed now uh, we know from uh, ancient uh, sanskrit records that uh, uh, two sons of bharat were given pushkal and taksha they were given uh, to rule over gandhar and uh, pushkal had his capital at pushkalavati that is present day uh, charsada near kabul river and uh, the other son taksha had his capital at takshila so this is uh, uh, a view of uh, some of the scholars that uh, these two brothers they were ruling at, uh, at that part there is one important uh, script which we find in gandhar uh, particularly in kohistan region and it is called kohi script a reference to the strange script was first made by m sena and uh, thomas holdich in 1910 a few long inscriptions have been found in 1999 which are under study by professor nasim khan of uh, peshawar university who calls them inscriptions in kohi script as most of them are found in kohistan swat region the preliminary results uh, uh, show that the script has affinity with letters of brahmi kharoshthi and there are a few uh, signs which uh, uh, also tally with the harappan uh, signs now i would like to uh, tell you one very important aspect on uh, kashmir's mask and this has also been studied by the same professor professor nasim khan of uh, peshawar university discoveries at uh, kashmir smas can be considered as landmark in the political cultural and religious history of gandharan archaeology to me the word seems to have uh, derived from kashmir math which was the earliest known shaivite monastic uh, establishment in gandhar kashmir's mast what is uh, called today kashmir's mast is a great isolated cave some 
1135 meter above the sea level located 50 kilometers uh, northeast of mardan in northwest frontier province of pakistan the results of recent investigations have been published by nasim khan in treasures from kashmir's mast uh, which was which has been published from peshawar in 2006 Now this uh, uh, Kashmir mast, uh, there is one cave on the hill, and on the foothill below the great cave, in the open plain, there is an impressive establishment, which is locally called Bakhai. More sites and water reservoirs are also located in the area, in the valley. An important fact is that Chuan Sang, in the seventh century, who was traveling through this region and coming towards the mainland of uh, you know, Bharatvarsh, mentioned the settlement of the area, which is represented besides the great cave by Safari, Khar Darwaza, Bade Uba, Bakhai. Dulais Mast, Pajja, and Gajdara complex. The establishment continued from fourth, fifth century A.D. onwards. The Great Cave at Kashmir Mast is uh, mentioned in a copper plate inscription, which was found there during the excavations. It is called. Uh, as it is mentioned in the uh, copper plate the cave is called sita mahakandara where lives goddess lajja gauri and lajja gauri goddess is called bhima who is also mentioned by swan sang saw her figure in the mountains northeast of polusha or peshawar which is the area of kashmir's mast Swan Sang also mentions the temple of Maheshwar or Maheshwar Dev in the area, which can be identified with the house of the Vardhmaneshwar mentioned in the copper plate inscription. Vardhmaneshwar. Now, at least three monasteries or mathas, Shaiv mathas. they existed in the area down the hill which is called bakhai settlement where there are three uh, math or uh, monasteries first is kshayani math this is mentioned in the copper plate inscription which was located in the central complex then the second one is ahani math which is mentioned in a painted water pot inscription which was located inside the cave and the third one is paramat mentioned in the copper plate inscription which was located to the north of chani mat so this the third mat was located to the north of the first mat this is information we gather from the copper plate grant a uh, copper plate inscription Now, besides uh, these three uh, monastic establishments, again I remind, uh, I would like to remind you uh, that these are monastic establishments of the Shaivas, and that is why uh, it called mat or smast in the present language, and mat, which which is a common feature. of the shaiv mathas in different parts and it is called kashmir math because probably the kashmir shaivism had reached in the gandhar and it was spreading in gandhar in the post kushan and gupta period so besides the above three uh, mathas remains of five shaiv temples have also been found in the bakhai Uh, settlement 
based on these i have proposed the original name of kashmir's mass to be kashmir math as it must have been a center of kashmir shaivism in the gandhar area now you can see some of the uh, objects which have been found uh, at uh, uh, the excavations at bakhai uh, in kashmir's mast area you, the first two are the images of vishnu the third one is the image of uh, sri ganesh fourth one is a lady figure the fifth one in the first line may be buddha or any monk and uh, in the lower uh, uh, three uh, slides uh, the first one is a, a shivaling the second one is a broken figure of uh, some uh, deity and the third one is again a mukhaling and they belong to uh, all of them they belong belong to, to the time uh, soon after 3rd 4th century ad there are metal plaques and masks which have also been found you can see the uh, first one depicts radha and krishna the second one depicts a kinnari uh, the lower one depicts a kinnari and uh, on the right side the two masks they uh, depict lord shiva where you can see the clearly see the third eye on his forehead there are uh, um, ceramics as well as metal uh, utensils which have been found in the excavations and many of them are connected with the mathas and the uh, monastic establishment as well as with the temple one important aspect is that uh, uh, the kashmir mast has several uh, bronze seals and ceilings so uh, you can very well see the figure of lajja gauri on uh, uh, the first three uh, figures in the lower panel uh, lajja gauri as bhim bhima is mentioned and uh, she is mentioned as uh, she, uh, probably it was donated to the goddess bhima so it is written shri bhimai so in all the three you, you can see uh, the third one is actually the um, clear drawing of the second one and uh, the first one is the seal the second one is its ceiling so it is written shri bhimai there are other uh, seals and ceilings in bronze uh, you you have in the first one shri bhimai guhvasin so the bhima who lives in the cave shri bhimai guhvasin is the uh, legend on the first um, seal you 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 can see actual seal is at number 1 and number 2 is its uh, mirror image similarly uh, the lower one has uh, shri dijarid but uh, what what does it mean uh, it is not very clear and uh, uh, at on the right side the single one you have the human form uh, of shiva with a shivling so it's a ceiling so all these uh, shaivite and vishnuite elements they were available there in the gandhar region about which uh, only because of the new excavations conducted 
in the region of Gandhar, these informations have come. I was mentioning about the copper plate. So you can see on the left side, uh, this is the copper plate which mentions about uh, the, uh, the two different matas and also about the uh, shrines of uh, Shiva and Bhima uh, Devi. The second one is a Sharda inscription on a schist stone. Similarly, uh, the third one has is again in schist and it's uh, uh, an inscription which is not very le uh, legible but uh, it is definitely in the shankh lipi or conch shell script uh, if you just see this uh, um, seal you can very well understand the iconography of the well-known uh, luxury is represented there. The inscription uh, reads Vibhidai and uh, it's not clear to me, neither to me nor to the excavator, what is the meaning. But in the first one, which is uh, a, a bronze seal, it is written Shri Bhimai, which mentions the name of the Lajavari, who is depicted as Bhima in the area. There, uh, besides uh, uh, the inscriptions, seal, ceilings, and sculptures and other uh, panel uh, objects. The gold ornaments of very good quality belonging to 5th, 6th century, they have also been found uh, at Kashmir's mask, which you can see some of the gold ornaments here. But to me, it seems the most important finding of the area you can see the the legend written here from uh, it is the opposite side so uh, it's the seal a gold seal but if you take the impression of it on the right side here it is clearly written Sri Sitara and mentioning and that too in the nail headed Brahmi script of about third century AD. So Sri Sitaram is a, is a, a significant thing uh, which we find on the gold seal and this one is the uh, back uh, side of the seal to hold it uh, for stamping. So this is a very interesting and very significant uh, finding from the area. Now, besides that, uh, around Peshawar Valley, Madan and Swabi, primitive rock paintings have been noticed in recent times at uh, Natyan, Torai Gatai, and uh, Swarai Gatai, etc. Uh, besides Kalatasa, early Buddhist rock paintings have also been discovered at rock shelters of Parlai Dab, Kafir Kot, Marano Tangai, Shamo, and Hinduano Hatai in the Thana Valley. So I am not going into the details of the Buddhist rock paintings here. And we proceed further. Even the late Buddhist rock paintings are also there belonging to the 4th, 6th century AD, uh, found at Patwano Gatai and Bhutkara 1, which have been uh, discovered in recent times. And they uh, are quite... Uh, uh, they have quite similarity 
with uh, the period of Kashmir's march. It's an alarming situation that in the absence of implementation of strict and stringent rules for preservation of sites and antiquities and also for excavations, a large number of sites, not only in Gandhar, but in the entire country are being destroyed by antiquity hunters through illegal diggings and the archaeology archaeologists in both government and academic institutions are lamenting over this issue. Uh, I would like to give an example. A bunch of Kharoshti inscribed copper plates from Rani Dab at Orkazai uh, Agency in uh, East Peshawar was brought for identification in the University of Peshawar by an antique digger who immediately took them back and never returned. The eight leaves of copper plates fused together and bounded by rings were the longest available Kharoshti inscription in such form issued by one Kshatrap Yudhamuni around 1st century BC. So such type of things are lost also. In uh, the Gandhar region, there are a couple of sites which have been excavated, which have given very good results. Uh, one is Manik Rai Dheri in Haripur Valley. Uh, Department of Archaeology, Pakistan, excavated the site for two, two seasons till 1999. A cultural sequence of two periods, Sethoparthian and Kushan, was found there. And pottery represents the typical ceramic tradition of Gandhar in the early centuries of the common era. And uh, there are toilet trays uh, depicting various uh, Indo-Greek, uh, Hindu and Buddhist um, deities. Peshawar is uh, uh, the ancient Purushpur, which was the main capital of the Kushans. The Bala Hisar fort occupied by the army today has great archaeological potential. But fortunately, it is under the uh, army occupation. It is regretted to mention that the famous excavated site, Shah Ji Ki Dheri, just outside the Ganj gate of Peshawar city, has been today occupied by modern buildings with no remains of Kushan Buddhist settlement. Kanishka's relic casket is in Peshawar Museum, which was found from uh, Vishaji Ki Dheri. And uh, the, uh, now if you go there, you cannot find the uh, spot uh, of the ancient site. Some new in, uh, initiatives have been taken uh, at a uh, site in Peshawar, uh, the site known as Gor Katri site in uh, center of the fortified city. It has been identified with the site of stupa of Buddha's arms bowl. And scholars such as Abdul Rahman from Pakistan, they connect it with Goraknath, an early medieval Siddha saint. And there is a uh, medieval Shiva temple which exists today at the site. Since 1992, the site is continuously under excavation by the Department of Archaeology of Pakistan. The site has yielded a continued cultural sequence from circa 4th, 3rd century BC till present times. Now, after this, uh, let me once again come back to the coins and uh, seal ceiling. Um, the coin... Uh, if you see the uh, obverse and reverse of this particular coin of Indo-Greek Indo king Agathocles, it shows on obverse the uh, figure of Balram. On the reverse, you have the figure of Krishna. The name of the king is also mentioned with his title Basilius, Basilius Agathocles on the obverse, 
and uh, it is uh, written in uh, greek characters and on the reverse side it is written in the typical second century bc characters of brahmi agathu clash so uh, probably uh, in the entire indian context the depiction of krishna and balram in the second century bc we owe this to the indo greek kings and uh, their iconography of uh, krishna and balram it was well established so uh, it was in the society everyone knew uh, about this and these coins were in circulation in northwest uh, part in gandhar region and beyond uh in the indo greek area so it was it also shows the spread of uh the bhagavat cult vishnu uh from gandhar 4th 6th century uh, ad a sardonic uh, seal representing vishnu uh, with a worshipper is shown on the right side uh and there is a uh, cursive bactrian legend there which mentions mehir vishnu and shiva on it there are a number of uh, shiva figures which have been found from uh, ancient sites in gandhar mostly belonging to the time of the 4th 5th century ad probably that was the time when the gupta gupta rulers had their sway over that region and it was a very mixed uh, culture which was developing in gandhar the buddhist the brahmanical hindu uh, mixed with the indo greek and indo persian persian chinese all mixed together so you can see the shiva sculptures in gandhar region and uh, uh, we have also figures these are some representative figures which i am showing um, you the first one kartike the second one vishnu the third one surya and most probably there is a uh, influence on these figures uh, they belong to about 6th 7th century ad and uh, there is there seems to be a direct impact or influence of the kashmir art on them uh with book mentioning about this particular inscription uh, we may not be uh, doing justice to the uh, uh, lecture rabatak inscription which was found in 91 92 uh, in the baglan province of afghanistan it's a record which gives details of uh, um, the kushan dynasty and the happening in the Uh, year one of uh, Kanishk. Also, it gives the genealogical list of uh, the Kushans from Kujila Katrises to Kanishk, in whose reign this inscription, this twenty-three line inscription, uh, on a stone slab, was written in the Tokharian language or Bactrian language, and but in Greek characters. it clearly indicates that the new language was adopted for official purpose which is called arya bhasha aryo basu though greek script was initially used as it was common amongst the subjects kanishk is credited to have introduced an era in his year 1 and he already had sway over the northern india various cities of the chatriyas are mentioned under control of kanishk including saket koshambi and patliputra 
the names of Ujjaini and Kondinipur and Sri Champa have also been deciphered in the inscription as uh, under Kushan rule. The discovery of Rabatak inscription has provided insight to understand evidence from previously discovered inscriptions for new uh, interpretations. The second known Kushan king, Vima Taku, seems to have been mentioned in the Dashti Navur inscription in Afghanistan and in the Mart inscription at Mathura. Uh, the earlier uh, written uh, in Tokhri uh, language and Greek script and the latter in hybrid Sanskrit and Brahmi characters. The Stavur inscription mentions Istorgo Oemo Takto, and Mart inscription records Maharajo Rajatirajo, Deoputro, Kushan Putro, Shahi Vem, and then there are letters which are quite damaged, but the is very clear. Probably it is Takshumasse. Both seems to mention Vima Taktu and not the third ruler Vima Katrises. And we know from the genealogical list of the Rabatak inscription that Vima Katrises was father of Kanishk and Vima Taktu was grandfather of Kanishk. In recent studies, Humbak, Fussman, Sims Williams, Joe Crib, B.N. Mukherjee and others have made significant contributions on it. Kushan Devukul, which is known as Bagolago, have been traced at Dashtinavur, Surk Kotal, uh, Rabatak in Afghanistan, and at Mart in uh, India. And we know about the Devukulas from uh, poet Bhas, who has uh, written uh, Pratima Natkam, where the Devukul is also mentioned. The area of Mart near Mathura is known as Tokri Tila, which seems to refer to the mound of the Tokharians. Now, from Gandhar, we come to uh, Bactria or Bahlik. Uh, antiquity of the Indo-Bactrian relationship starts in the prehistoric times with the evidence of, of rock, cut, rock art but can very well be understood with the growth of 16 great states of North, Northern South Asia, or in other words, the ancient India. Traditionally, Madra, Gandhar and Kamboj were considered parts, uh, parts of Jambudip or ancient Indian region, but towards north of it was Bahli, which, which is none other than bulk or bacteria, but not confined northern Afghanistan and extended in the region of the oxus jaxartes divide and traditionally called in India in the medieval times as Bulk Bukhara. It covers the area of present-day Uzbekistan and partly Tajikistan with its neighbors, uh, neighbors Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. So there are certain comparisons of uh, uh, the rock art which we find in uh, Fargana uh, com in comparison to what we find in uh, India in Ladakh. There are the ibex figures which are very common in both, in both. and ibex figures are uh, uh, in Baltistan region. Uh, it is it had been there had been a, uh, a ritual in which the thanksgiving after childbirth was given uh, at certain places and ibexes were worshipped. So ibex figures were carved on the rocks and this uh, process was uh, called in the Balti language as uh, Thuma Salim. The uh, Bactrian region and the areas of Sokht Khwarizm was occupied first by the Tokharians with their center activity around the city of Termez near Samarkand in Uzbekistan. The core area was Balk, Kabul and the region on both the sides of uh, River Oxus. Archaeological excavations have brought to light large sites at ancient Termez, Karatepe, Zartepe, Chengiztepe, uh, Kampirtepe, Khalchian, 
दलवरजिन तेपे अफ्रसियाब इन उजबेकिस्तान एंड आजीना तेपे पेंजिकन एंड अदर्स इन ताजिकिस्तान बुद्धिज्म फ्लरिश्ड इन दिस रीजन फ्रॉम कुशान पीरियड ऑनवर्ड्स फॉर सेवरल सेंचुरीज विद डायरेक्ट कंटैक्ट विद इंडियन मेन लैंड एंड विद द साइट्स ऑफ चाइनीज तुर्किस्तान इन तारिम बेस Now let me uh, tell something about the uh, Rishik Tushar. The Indian Puranic tradition, Matsya, Vayu, and Brahmand Puran, they assign 105 or 107 years of rule of 14 Rishik Tushar kings who succeeded the Yavanas. Mahabharat also mentions them. Indian literature always refer Kushans as uh, either. Uh, तुषारस और तुरस्कस एज इन द राजतरंगिणी ऑफ कल्याण वेयर थ्री नेम्स ऑफ किंग्स हुश्क जुश्क एंड कनिष्क आर मैंशन द तुखारियन दैट इज कुशान टाइटल्स ऑफ किंग्स सच एज बादो शाओ और शाओ नानो शाओ कंटिन्यूड अमंग द टर्क्स एंड मुगल्स इन द मेडिवल टाइम्स एज बादशाह और शहनशाह बादो शाओ बादशाह and shao nano shao as shan sha after the downfall of the imperial kushans their successors in different parts of kushan shahar uh, tigin or napki malik around 5th 6th century continued to use the title of the kushans and the later later on his coins called himself to be the king of tokharians and persians tokha uh, tarkhan khorasan malka Indian scripts Brahmi and Kharosthi became popular in this extended region of Bahlik and when the Kushan empire was founded all of these areas were politically and culturally united this was the time when indian monks and traders settled in the region beyond oxus and jaxartes and the evidence from termez karatepe dalvarjin tepe and many more archaeological sites in uzbekistan attest to this a place in uzbekistan called kankini can be identified with kank who is mentioned in the charak sanghita of maharshi charak which is a book on medicine a place from where came the bahlik physician kankayan bahlik bhishaj so there was a continuous interaction between uh, different re- uh, religious uh, groups def- different reli- different uh, scholars different traders with b- bacteria or bali uh, this is a picture of uh, afrasia uh, which is a, a very great site near samarkand excavated uh, for, by the formerly Uh, soviet union uh, the area of termes where there are so many uh, sites city sites as well as uh, monastic establishments which i just mentioned about language i must tell that the language used by the kushans was bactriano pali or corrupt sanskrit which was derived from tokharian and sanskrit and had become lingua franca of the entire kushan empire from oxus to ganga and the rabatak inscription also mentions that in the first year itself of his reign uh, kanishk had dis- discontinued the use of greek language and adopted aryabhasu or the tukharian mixed with bactriano pali as the state language which had be- brought the people of uzbekistan and india nearer to each other about 2000 years ago sanskrit literature particularly the puranas and mahabharat mention the yuchis as rishik and the joint word rishik tushar repeatedly mentioned uh, suggests yuchi kushans or the tukhar turks belonging to rishik family even in the 12th century ad the sanskrit poet kalhan in his rajtarangini calls three kushan rulers hushk jushk and kanishk as turushk uh, which was the general name given to the turks the term turushk in uh, sanskrit is nearer to 
Tokhar, by which name the Kushans were known, and the area of their origin, original settlement was called Tokharistan, and the language they used was called Tokharian. These people from Uzbekistan had their sway in Gandhar and in North India somewhere in the first century BC, when Kujula, uh, who had relationship with uh, Parthian Gondofaris of Taxila and Indo-Greek ruler Hermias of Bactria, and who is referred to as prince in his early life, became sovereign ruler by ending the rules of Parthians and Indo-Greeks and established his rule over Gandhar and also probably North India, where uh, his successor, his successors, including the two Vima, uh, Vimas, Kanishk, Huishk, and Vasudev, ruled till the third century AD. Uh, I'm not going into details of the uh, Tokhars uh, now, but uh, one aspect I would just like to mention that inscriptions from Sarnath, Zeda, Mathura, Manikyala, they mention Mahakshatra. And, and the names are also given. Similarly, uh, Mahadandanayak and Dandanayak uh, names are also given. And they all are the Tokharian uh, feudal uh, names who were given these titles. But the Indian um, uh, population who was uh, working in the uh, administration was either Gramik or Padrapal, which uh, we find mentioned in the um, inscriptions. Uh, a view of Kampirtepe, which is a, an extensive city site in uh, Termes area. Uh, on the bank of uh, river Oxus. And then there are certain comparisons of uh, objects found from Fayaz Tepe in uh, Uzbekistan with uh, the uh, objects which we find from the Baroque uh, Gandhar sculpture uh, objects from uh, Indian context in uh, uh, Ambaran in uh, Aknur region. Uh, there are inscribed potsherds which we find from various sites in Hermes region. Uh, Bactrian terracotta head of a Rishi and the Kushan princess. First one is from Old Termes, the second one is from Mathura. And now I come to the uh, concluding part. Uh, the chronologically, there are three phases of Kushan settlements. First in the region of Tokharistan. Uh, that is north of Bactria and Uzbekistan, second in Gandhar, south of Bactria, and from Kabul to Taxila, and the third in North India. They uh, had their three capitals in these three spheres or regions, first in the Surkhandarya region near Termes, second in Pur uh, Purushpur or Pur Peshawar, and the third at Mathura. Once the Kushans occupied India, the cultural impact started in opposite direction. Extension of uh, Indian culture in first is first visible in Gandhar and then in Bactria. Due to Kushan uh, interactions and carrying forward the Indian culture in the Tarim Basin and around the Gobi Desert, Indian culture, mainly Buddhist, was adopted in the present Xinjiang uh, area of China. But in and you can find even uh, uh, the figures of uh, Hindu depicted in Dunhuang, Ganesh, Shiva, and other uh, Hindu deities are depicted there in Dunhuang. Similarly, Shiva is depicted in Kwanzao uh, on stone, and Narsimha is also depicted over there. Thank you very much.